Samuel Coleridge Taylor was an English composer, conductor, and political activist who fought against race prejudice with his incredible compositions. Born in 1875 to an English mother and a father originally from Sierra Leone, he liked to be identified as Anglo-African. Conscious of his African descent, Taylor's classical compositions were heavily influenced by traditional African music and this made him one of the most progressive writers of his time. He also became well known for his use of poetry in his compositions. Despite the black community's ongoing battle against racism, his work across music and politics was so well received that in 1904, he was even invited by President Theodore Roosevelt to visit the White House. This was a bold statement and a positive step forward for African Americans. Some of Taylor's best known works today include Nonet in F Minor, His Extraordinary Christmas Overture, and Deep River, a traditional African American spiritual. Undine Smith Moore began taking piano lessons at the age of seven, and her compositional career took off from there. She started her collegiate career at Fisk University, but was then offered a scholarship to the Juilliard School to finish her studies, where she graduated cum laude. In 1927, she became a piano teacher at Virginia State College, where she also taught counterpoint and theory. She was also made chorus teacher at Webster Davis Lab High School, where she wrote her own music to fit whatever her students needed. In 1969, Moore and her friend Altona Trent Johns became co-founders of the Black Music Center at Virginia State College. The center educated members about contributions of black people to the music of the United States and the world. A few of her honors include the Humanitarian Award from Fisk University, and she was labeled the Music Laureate for the state of Virginia, just to name a few. She wrote more than 100 pieces between 1925 and 1987, but sadly only 26 of them were published. In 1981, her Pulitzer Prize-nominated oratorio, Scenes from the Life of a Martyr, was premiered at Carnegie Hall. It was based on the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., where she had planned the piece for at least five years, and she considered it to be her most significant work. Joseph Antonio Ebedee's amazing life took him from Guinea to Brazil to Portugal to the Lisbon Opera before finally becoming Cornwall's top violinist and composer. Emity was born in West Africa in 1775 and spent his early years in slavery in Brazil. It is believed that his slave master taught him how to play the fiddle, which changed his life. His talents led him to being taken to Portugal, where he was soon playing violin with the Lisbon Opera Orchestra. But his freedom was short-lived because he was kidnapped to play fiddle aboard a military ship and was kept in slavery for seven years before being dumped in Falmouth, Cornwall. During his 30 years in Cornwall, he was by far the best-known composer, violinist, and teacher in the region, as well as the leader in the Truro Philharmonic. Unfortunately, while various artifacts attest to the existence of Joseph Emity, none of his scores has ever been discovered. While his music, symphonies, and concertos may have perished, his memory lives on. Florence Price began her musical studies as a toddler with her mother, at the young age of four, she had her first piano performance, and her first composition was published by the age of 11. By the time she was 14, Florence graduated as valedictorian of her class and enrolled in the New England Conservatory of Music to double major in piano and organ. She originally had to apply as a Mexican to avoid racial discrimination against African Americans during this time. But while she was there, she wrote her first string trio and symphony and graduated in 1906 with honors. She was one of 2,000 students to double major. In 1910, she became head of the music department of what we now know as Clark Atlanta University and eventually moved to Chicago. She was enrolled in four schools at the time where she studied different languages and liberal arts subjects in addition to composition. She also worked as an organist for silent film screenings and composed songs for radio ads. Her music consists of a lot of strong American ideals that are tied to her southern roots. She constantly used the music she learned in church as material for her compositions. On June 15, 1933, she became the first black female composer to have a symphony performed by a major American orchestra. Music director Frederick Stock and the Chicago Symphony played the world premiere of her Symphony No. 1 in E minor at the famous Auditorium Theater in Chicago, Illinois. The musical life of Margaret Bonds, born 1913, a native of Chicago, began in her family's living room where her mother, an accomplished organist, facilitated gatherings of important black artists, writers, and musicians. In 
It was here that Bonds met Florence Price, with whom she studied piano and composition. In 1933, Bonds performed Price's Piano Concerto with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra during the World's Fair. With this performance, she holds the distinction of being the first African-American woman to perform as a soloist with a major American orchestra. In 1939, Bonds moved to New York and became an important figure in the artistic scene in Harlem. Her close friendship with Langston Hughes led to many of her celebrated vocal compositions, such as the choral work The Ballad of the Brown King, the Negro Speaks of Rivers, 1941, and the songs collected under the title Three Dream Portraits in 1959.